funny the difference between a sh movie and the sh movie. That was the sh movie. So the question is, is how does it stack up when you hold it against Ridley Scott's portfolio of sci-fi films? Sorry, Rids, but this is at the bottom of your pack. Admittedly, a great pack to be a part of, but uh, it ain't Blade Runner and it ain't Alien. I'm gonna say, I would say the same thing, but I would honestly say that it belongs in that company. Not, not like really fits in perfectly, but it definitely belongs in the company with those two films. It's not quite at their level, but it's a good movie. It's solidly entertaining from start to finish. I wasn't bored. I wasn't irritated by anything. Because, I, you know, I'm a nitpicker. Mm -hmm. I like to go through and find out. Well, I'm not going to say I like to. My nature forces me to go through and find all the little things that are going to irritate me upon future viewings. And, you know, I got to say, there weren't a lot of them. There were a few, but the funny thing is, is they weren't nitpicky in the traditional sense of nitpicking. They were more motivational. Issues. Like, well, what is this character's motivation here? Why is their motivation this way? And most of them were answered later on in the movie. Particularly, Fassbender's David became, his motivations became clear later on. Which were very... of which, Fassbender was phenomenally good in this Fassbender's movie. the man. Which character did Fassbender play? He played David. David the Wobot. Not a spoiler. He's very clearly a Wobot from the beginning. The cool thing was, is like, it appealed to the real movie fan and like the Ridley Scott fans and all the other fans and everything like that. And yet, yet still, your lay person who's not like a huge movie geek can actually really watch that movie and just have a lot of fun and enjoy it start to finish. It's a very good, broad appeal movie. And broad appeal movies tend to slip into pandering really easily. Yeah. And this one doesn't do that. There are moments where I'm like, uh, yeah, I know why they had to come right out and say that in yeah, order seriously. to make it painfully obvious. <laughs> and there's only like two two moments that are like that in the whole movie. I'm not going to go into them for spoiler reasons. It does irk me, but at the same time, I'm saying to myself, well, this is for John and Jane Doe America, who are not savvy enough to have picked this up purely from context. They have to actually come out and say it. This is what is happening. Ugh. <laughs> I really yeah. feel like people need to stop giving John and Jane Doe America so much credit. Let them walk out confused. And really, it was, like I said, two moments of the entire movie. You know what did bother me? though. Guy Pierce's face looks like it was melting. Do you think they would have perfected old people makeup by now? You know what I loved about Guy Pierce's makeup? And this is actually a throwback to Snow White and the Huntsman. They got the hands right. They did. They did absolutely. They In did Snow White and the Huntsman, right. when Charlize Theron was getting old, her hands were still the hands of a woman <laughs> in her 30s. And they just didn't look right. They really nailed down Guy Pierce's hands. In this Wait, game. was Guy Pierce oh, the old guy? Guy Pierce was the old guy, yes. Uh -oh. Once again, it breaks my heart every time I see Guy Pierce get underused. Yeah. Movie. Once it's again, really, he was underused. I personally hold uh, Prometheus on the same level as Alien a little bit better, actually. You liked it better? Yeah. We got the youth voice in here today. Yeah, personally, yeah. It was fantastic. They were only like, the old person makeup was a little weird. That one part with Charlize Theron, like, she's not gonna, she's not gonna say it. Oh, she and said she it. said it. Oh, yeah, come on. yeah that, that, that part. That it's, was, it's obvious what's going on. Everybody it's knows so what's clear. going on. Everyone knows it, and it's just yeah, like, please don't say it. Please don't. Say it. Oh, oh, she said it, and she just puked it all over the. And screen. the delivery was really weird too. She was just like saying the line, and she's like, <laughs> yeah, just kind of puked it out. It was. It was. <laughs> it was weird. It was so strange. It's, Such an odd choice. Yeah, I could go on about that because because I liked the rest of the movie so much yeah. that that is gonna piss me off every single time I watch it. I felt like Alien was a purer film and Blade Runner was one where the scope, the magnitude of it was fully achieved. This movie didn't quite achieve it to the level that I wanted it to and it wasn't as pure as Alien. That's why I would rate it below those three. However, to say that you're not as good as Alien and Blade Runner yeah, seriously. is not condemnation of a movie because those are two of the best movies ever made. I would say that it needs to be acknowledged that the performances in this movie were good across the board. Fassbender stood out, like really stood out, and Guy Pierce, he, like you said, he was underused. But uh, Numi Rapace, Charlie Theron, the guy who played Numi Rapace, or whatever her last name is, his boyfriend, that was the guy I was totally not excited about, and uh, he did a decent job. Uh, the guy that played the captain of the ship, he did a decent I mean, it was just, all in all, the acting was just really good in this film. From the beginning, given the amount of characters who were on board the ship, I felt like it might go the way of burying these main characters under a slew of side characters that get overused, and that didn't happen. Does it seem to, like to anybody else that if you're going to spend a trillion dollars 
send people way far away. You're not going to put the geologist who looks like he just shit someone in his cell <laughs> with <laughs> obvious anger management problems on the ship. I mean, yeah, that was a questionable it, choice. It I seems have like agree. if you're like going in for the geologist job interviews and the dude comes in with a mohawk and facial tattoos, you're like, no, no, that's not, you're not, I'm sorry. Well, at the same time, we have to take into consideration that this takes place 70 years in the future. Perhaps by then, facial tattoos are considered normal. I have one thing to say. All right. Okay, so Prometheus, he was a titan that gave charcoal from Zeus's, like, platter of charcoal to the humans so they could have fire. Yeah. All right. I admit it. I'm a moron because I didn't know who Prometheus was going into the movie. But I will defend myself by saying I consciously didn't know who Prometheus was. You made I didn't decision. accidentally not know who Prometheus so that was. was the argument. I decided not to know who Prometheus That's was. That's the argument that I was talking about from the beginning. Is a film just the film itself? Or is the fact that it is Prometheus and you learn months in advance that it has something to do with the Titan bringing fire to the people? Isn't that part of the experience? Well, I guess the question there then is to what degree is marketing a part of the film? It's not all the time, but like, I believe if the artist is involved. Blair Witch Project is a great example. You can't separate that movie from its marketing strategy and still get the same experience. You just yeah, can't. Because the marketing on the Blair Witch was all real, right? They were marketing it as if it were a real film, as if it were actual documentary footage. So I guess that raises the question, to what degree was marketing an actual integral part of this film. You haven't seen the videos. Yet. I have not. Both of which I believe are directed by Ridley Scott. Okay, so we better give a rating if we want to open anything else. Quick recap for new viewers and for Ollie. Ten is a perfect film. Zero is Battleship, the ultimate piece of garbage. Five is no feelings one way or the other. Five to zero is an increasing scale of bad. Five to ten is an increasing scale of good. So that's how we rate it. I will rate this movie an eight. That's a little low. I don't like heaping excessive amounts of praise on a movie, okay? I, I'm not going to overrate a movie, at least not for myself. I'm very cautious with my ratings. I would give this movie an eight. I could go 8.5. I could go 8.5 on this, but... All right, you know what? Fastbender pushes it up to an 8.5 for me, all right? All right I, I loved Fastbender in this movie, and I really strongly liked the movie. So, for Michael Fastbender's sake, I will give it an 8.5. I'm going to say 9. I'm going to say 9, too. I wouldn't give it a 10, just because it's not really the perfect movie. You need to have a certain level of purity, in my opinion. Like, almost like it has to be inaccessible to certain people in order for it to be a truly perfect movie. But this is definitely, like, way up there on my list of great movies. This movie it deserves a 9. All right, Ollie, defend your 9. Well, I gave Blade Runner a 9.5, and it's not as good as Blade Runner. It's just barely not as good, though, in my opinion. Just barely. Okay. So, I... All right. Okay. We had to do our ratings before the end because everything from now on is a spoiler. Spoiler alert. We're giving you the opportunity. You've had the opportunity. Opportunity's gone. This movie is, uh, what did you say? Alien this Zero? This is Alien Zero. This is the alien origin story that I wanted the first time I saw Alien. Yeah. Everybody's been asking since the 1970s. Where did they come from? What's the origin story? Where did it all start? Why did it all start? And this tells you the story, you know what, and it does it fantastically well. You know what well. the great thing about this is? Like Star Wars, right? When you watch the original Star Wars trilogy, you felt like the entire movie, all they were trying to do was get Anakin into the Darth Vader costume. Like, that was the whole point of the whole thing. Yeah. This doesn't feel like that at all. You can totally watch this movie having never seen the Alien movies and enjoy it start to finish, because Absolutely. this movie yeah. is not just Aliens. Zero. If Alien had never been made, this film would still totally make sense and be a really good movie. The reason I like Prometheus more than Alien is because I like Origins a lot more than I like Aftermath. Also, I love ridiculous things that just happen, like all the ridiculous things that were made up to make it work out as an origin. Like there were a couple of strange things, like the near the ending, that was kind of like a stretch. And I like that, I, lo I love stretches. What was funny about it 
was that from the beginning, Geiger's design is so apparent in this movie, and I thought, wow, that's a really strange choice considering Ridley Scott did the original Alien. Obviously, the parallels are going to be drawn, but it's not about aliens. Like, that was my thought at the beginning, was, but it's not about aliens. And it's not until the end that we realize, oh, this is the alien in its purest form before it went through generations and generations of evolution to get to the point where it was when we saw it in Alien. The way that they worked the Alien Zero story into a story that was already happening independently and capable of keeping you entertained all on its own was just perfect. I mean, they really did a great job with that. Jumped I kind of it, wish yeah. I could have experienced it where you didn't really realize what was going on until right at the very end. See, I literally did not. But that's the thing about me. I have never been able to predict the outcome of a movie before it happened. There are people who can figure that stuff out. I am proudly not one of them because I love the moment when all the tumblers fall into place and suddenly you get it. I love that moment and I love it to come right at the moment the director wants it to come. Unfortunately, they show the space jockey, which is the creature from the original Alien that they show just for a second and they show him in the trailer, but only for like the tiniest little flash. It's just like, Bip, and it's gone. I was like, is that the thing from Alien? And then, like, at that point, I had already... At that point, you pretty much knew it was Alien Zero. That this is Alien Zero. There you go. That's the reason that I am thrilled that I did not watch a single trailer, well, that I did not watch a single the promo, cool thing because I love that it took the entire movie for me to get that. Because you know once cool I got it, it was awesome! <laughs> the next time through, when you watch it again, I'm gonna you're going to see all of these little subtle connections yeah, I'm gonna to get the original everything. Alien trilogy. Now I want to watch Alien. Probably the vast majority of audiences are, are going to walk away from this movie and go, I gotta go rewatch Alien. Yeah, seriously. Mm -hmm. I had the good fortune of having watched Alien very recently, so. I haven't it's, seen it, Alien it's, since it's I was been nine. Here. It's been, well, it's been since he was nine was the last time I watched oh. Alien. It's two sides of the spectrum, though, because you went into it knowing nothing, and I went into it knowing everything, and yet I think we both enjoyed the movie as yeah, much we still in Yeah, we still had a really good time with the movie, which is the reason that we love Ridley Scott as a director. Whatever he puts his hands on not only stands up the first time you watch it, it stands up the 41st time you watch yeah. it. You can walk into it and have a great, great time. I think after 44 times you get a little bored. Nope, after the 10th time it only gets better. You've seen too many movies 10 times plus. Like yeah. I said, I can't rate it as highly as I rate Blade Runner and Alien because of the purity factor and the magnitude factor, okay. but I, I really loved it. Just pray that they never released this in a bundle with Alien Resurrection. You that actually had to terrible. articulate that. Just articulating that bums me out, <laughs> Seth. I'm willing to go Alien, Aliens, and Alien 3. But boy, you start talking Resurrection and we're going to have a problem. Oh. And to recap, was it 8.5? 8.5. 9. 9. Go watch this movie. It's totally worth it. Go see think? it in the theater. Yes. Watch this movie in the theater. Get out there, support movies like this getting made so that more movies like this will get made and we won't get another piece of sh** like Battleship. Thanks for watching, everybody. Please hit the like and subscribe buttons. I feel like a whore every time I say that. Oh, and leave a comment. We like to get them. We em. like comments. Comments are great. All right. Next Later. week.